I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. Appreciate you spending some time with us. Today I'm really happy to introduce to you Greg Bolton. We've met his wife before, Annette. What a delight she is. Thank you. And the book she wrote was Joseph and Emma, yes, a, a love story. A 19th century love affair. Of the 19th century love affair. Joseph Smith and Emma Hill. That was so wonderful. I really enjoyed reading that. Anyway, it's nice to have you here. Thanks. And I uh, appreciate you coming up and and spending some time with us and so tell us a little bit about your beginnings where were you born and what's your where do you spend your youth i was i was born in, in the naval infirmary in <laughs> in uh, north island uh, outside of san diego oh your dad was in the military huh? my biological yeah. father was yes oh, okay. and uh, uh he and mom uh, didn't see eye to eye and uh, mom came home and Stay with my grandparents. She went to beauty school. My older sister and I were kind of raised by our grandparents for a while. Yeah. And she met my father, who had <laughs> adopted me when I was five. Mm. And they got uh, married in the Logan Temple. And I was going to ask if they were LDS. Yes, very, oh, okay. very LDS. My father. Uh, um, a fourth generation. Uh, Latter Day Saint. Mm -hmm. uh, everyone was <clears throat> on missions. His great grandfather uh, translated the Book of Mormon into the French language. Wow! So they're what? deeply yeah. you know, immersed in <laughs> the LDS. So culture. you grew up LDS yes. and baptized at age eight. You were what else? I guess you deacon teacher and all deacon that. Deacon teacher. Kind of stuff. We we moved to. Uh, uh, Kearns, uh, after having been raised in Box Hiller County, we lived there for four years. My father got a, a job offer from an old supervisor friend in the construction industry uh, to move to Nauvoo, Illinois, and work on the church's restoration project really? there. And That's that. That was the entire city. Was it just the temple? What was it? Just, the well, all, all, they they owned several thousand acres at that time, and sure. they, they determined that they wanted to restore the old uh, city as much as they could. Yeah, the old red brick, brick buildings yes. and the roads and everything. That's oh yes, very nice. I and. Uh, so that's what my father did. I, I worked there for three different years in high school, and uh, it, it was an enjoyable experience. Now, is the church very um, not large, but is it pretty? Is there a lot of are there a lot well, of Mormons back well, there, there in Nauvoo is, still? It, there wasn't. There wasn't then. Yeah. There wasn't then. Um, we had a small branch in Nauvoo, and it, it, the branch proper had only been in Nauvoo for a while. That actually met in Carthage at one time, Keokuk, Iowa, which crossed the Mississippi River, and also Fort Madison, Iowa at one time. A lot of great church history involved in all that, isn't there? Oh, there is. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, of course, now you say you were there for 10 years, so um, wh how, what age was this when you left, finally? I, I left uh, when I was uh, 24. Oh, okay. So, so you went through high school there? Yes. And uh, you mentioned that you Eagle Scout and duty to God and all that stuff. All that good stuff, yes. <laughs> I uh, um, was the first LDS freshman at Nauvoo Calusa High School, and so that uh, oh my goodness brought on a lot of different uh, challenges all by itself. Now I know you went on a mission. Yes. Where did you go? From, did you go from Nauvoo then? Yes. Okay. Where uh, did you go on your mission? I was the first missionary to leave from the city of Nauvoo since the saints left. Oh my goodness. Whether or not that's distinctive now or not, I'm not oh, sure. I, but. <laughs> I think it's pretty distinctive, yeah. I went to North Carolina and Virginia. 
Oh. We all thought that I was going to Denmark because of our ancestry, but okay. <laughs> there, but you ended up in North uh, Carolina. Went to North Carolina, Virginia. Uh, it was a growing experience for me. Yeah. Um, Ever any question that the church was true or wasn't true? No, not at that time. No, uh, I I read the uh, Book of Mormon through cover to cover for, uh, for the first time after I graduated from high school. Yeah. And. Uh, I was comfortable applying the test that Moroni asked us to <laughs> apply, right. it, if it's true or not, and I was comfortable that it was. Sure. And uh, so I thought that would be a good thing to go out and share that message. Share that message. So nothing that ever uh, came across your plate that bothered you at all or anything no, in, in those formative no. years? and. No, I was... Uh, Just had a good, strong testimony of the church. Huh? Very strong TBM, as a matter of fact. <laughs> uh, w w there used to be a competition between the priests to see who would be the first person at the pulpit to bear the testimony at Fast and Fast Testimony. And yeah. Yes. <laughs> and you were there? <laughs> and you were... <laughs> yeah, we were quick. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's interesting. Did you under... Uh, what, what did you think of Jesus at this point? Uh, my brother. He, yeah. he was... a child of God just like we were a uh, Heavenly Father and uh, just kind of came I along first honored him and revered him and uh, yeah. was grateful for his sacrifice on the cross and giving up his life um, he, he was always a, the central focal point of my belief system was it he? wasn't Joseph Smith it wasn't uh, really uh, the other prophets so jo Jesus yeah. Christ was always important to me. Did you feel like that was your message on your mission too? Yes. Or did you preach oh, yeah. Joseph Smith and the oh, restoration? Yes. We, we, uh, we, we, we sometimes tracked with the Book of Mormon uh, and I was in the Bible Belt so it was... I wondered about that. It was tough going there. Yeah. And uh, my favorite uh, door approach was using, and it's odd that I remember this uh, 200 years later here, uh, <laughs> The pamphlet we uh, had as, a, as to pass out to sure. prospective people was the Jesus Christ, uh, Savior and Mediator of Mankind. Hmm. And it was a really nice full-color uh, brochure that we would hand, out, hand so. out, and that was my favorite tool to use because yeah. uh, that's who I thought I was representing was oh. Jesus Christ of the Bible. Okay. Uh, but apparently they're... Uh, was a distinct difference uh, of, <laughs> of reality know. and what I perceived. Yeah, that you've learned since, I guess. Yes, so, yeah. absolutely. Uh, it's interesting. I, I, I guess I didn't. Uh, I mean, I had a love for Jesus, I think, as an elder brother, as in my example, and he was baptized and did all that stuff. But I really felt like I was preaching the Restoration, you know, the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith, the need for prophets. That was kind of what I did. So you come home from your mission, what happens? Came home from my mission, went to college, still living in Nauvoo. Uh, well, after school, the, the, the school year was over that year, I went uh, out to California to see my sister mm. and her husband. He was a chiropractor. And they had just baptized a young woman and uh, we became enamored with each other and uh, communicated. A year later, uh, we were married. Uh, <laughs> she had been a member for two weeks when I met her oh. of the LDS Church. Yeah. And ten, year, 10 years later, we divorced with three children. She um, was excommunicated and no longer affiliated with, with the, the church. church. Okay. And so I was kind of taboo. <laughs> because I was still affiliated mm. and uh, still so, active and yes consequently I don't I don't uh, see those children okay. even though they're all uh, uh, BICs uh, so. Yeah. so you were active this whole time I mean you've always been a temple recommend holder and yes tithe payer and all the kind of all stuff that, yes all that in fact you worked in the temple was that there in California yes too? yeah I was a veil worker in the Oakland temple I was also a veil worker in the Ogden Temple. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. It was, felt special to me. Uh, 
I had no idea the uh, origins of, of the temple, where the temple ceremony came from, until much later. And uh, uh, isn't that so interesting? That Those really little interesting. things just kind of fall. Well, I guess the big question is: is what happens in your life to to kind of change things? Well, I I uh, got divorced. I. Uh, was introduced to a lovely woman by my sister uh, telephonically who lived in Utah and I came out and met her <laughs> and I was uh, my work had a slowdown at the time so I was not uh, obligated uh, for a while in California yeah I came out uh, met this uh, lovely woman we uh, hit it off quite well. Our first date was to the <clears throat> last day of the state fair. Oh. And uh, two days later, I uh, asked her to marry me. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and that was the 16th of September. And on the 5th of October, we were married in the Jordan River Temple. Oh, my. 19 days. Yeah. I don't recommend it, but it worked <laughs> for us. And you've been married for? 30 years now. 30 years. Well. That, that's amazing. So God must have been watching over that. <laughs> we, we, we sincerely believe that. Yeah. And that's been a, a helpful reminder in our lives that, that, God, anchor there. Huh? That, that God helps uh, uh, motivate us in our lives. We both had had dreams, personal visions, if you will, that we would meet our respective new spouses in the state and where they would come from and what they would look like. Mm -hmm. And when we met each other, it was like, ah, thank you. Just, just fit, huh? <laughs> yes, oh, it did. amazing? And still both of you active in the church. Oh, very, very yeah. much so. My wife was uh, in the Stake Relief Society presidency in her ward at that time. Yeah. And, uh, and you've been a Sunday school teacher? Sunday and... school teacher, ward clerk, uh, oh. Sunday school president, <laughs> uh, elders quorum uh, uh, instructor, Yeah, a lot of different stuff. Again, still no questions about the church, or at least not anything that was... No, uh, I, a... I worked for a gentleman who was quite anti, uh, for an, in a building automation company, and he um, would pose questions periodically. Yeah, that made me think a little bit. I don't recall any of them oh, uh, okay. uh, per se, but uh, it made you think a little. Made me think, yes, mm -hmm. that there might be something uh, else out there to Ooh. to uh, to learn about. Yeah, and uh, then I went back uh, active duty with the military after I left that position, and went to Iraq, the land of Abraham, and Isaac, <laughs> yeah. and Jacob. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the little pl locations I stayed at uh, right next to the Ur Ziggurat, which is, or Ur is supposed to oh, have yeah, uh, uh, been, and where Abraham came yeah. from. So it was a really nice experience. And uh, I came back from uh, my active duty stint uh, in Iraq, and uh, our current bishop said, Oh, this is so wonderful that you got to go to these places. We'd like to have you put on a fireside for us. And I said, I'd be glad to because I, I had some really interesting yeah. experiences. We had a, a lot of pictures, a, a maybe church and group. Stuff. Yes. Yeah. And yes. And we had a, a church group that met uh, there. Uh, here was a bunch of high priests um, meeting where Abraham was. <laughs> yeah. So that was it, it felt it felt wonderful. Uh, but before I could do that, a new bishop was put in who uh, didn't like me, and so he never asked me to do anything. And oh uh, his in-laws were missionaries in Nauvoo, and so he didn't care to hear anything about my Nauvoo experiences. And <laughs> consequently, his daughter, who was my daughter's age, uh, uh, was unkind and mean to her. So we tried to talk to him about it, and so we had disputations with him. We had disputations with our stake president, who worked for the first presidency directly, mm. and uh, 
Oh, it was uncomfortable, it was and, and it was, and it made us think. Wait a minute, this, if this is supposed to be a really kind, Christ-like organization, why are you? Being the so, love? <laughs> why are you being so unkind? Yeah. And uh, so our bipolar daughter, uh, oldest daughter, uh, came home, uh, had a child. Uh, we loved the child, loved, raised him well, and uh, had him blessed in sacrament meeting. And when I held him up to, for everybody to see, like this is the want of yeah, yeah. Uh, people in uh, that organization, they usually ooh and ah over yeah. the little baby, and it was dead silence. I had the audacity to bring this child, child uh, of dubious parentage, into their midst. When he was 18 months old, he had to have an operation. Um, and when he was well enough, I brought him to the nursery. People would see this branded child in the nursery and not take their and children take in their there. Children. And at that point in time, I determined that I would not be back. My wife had already determined that she was not going to be going anymore because of the poor way she was treated. Wow. And uh, Well, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Really? About that time, my wife started writing her book. Oh, and. She did. Uh, she shared all kinds of, of information that we had never heard of because we were banned from even reading it or looking at it when we were active in the culture. Well, yeah, they don't want you to no. do much studying or anything. Do you remember anything specific you read or studied uh, or saw? Stuff about Joseph Smith, stuff about the Temple Rites, yeah. uh, and their link to uh, uh, secret organizations. <laughs> Um, the well, one thing I, I guess I didn't when we I glossed over this a little bit. One thing that did bother me was when uh, Spencer uh, Kimball came out with the uh, 1978 edict that uh, allowed black people to now have the priesthood. I thought you had an interesting take on that. Go ahead. Uh, well, uh, I uh, I didn't understand. Why? And see, I, I was in North Carolina and Virginia on my mission, sure. and so we were not allowed to talk to black people. But we couldn't proselyte to them. Right. And uh, so I remember asking my uh, mission president, who uh, at the time was in the Quorum of the Seventy, um, why we couldn't teach him. He said, "Oh, okay." He took out the Doctrine and Covenants and the Book of Mormon and said, right here, they were not valiant in their preexistence, so they don't get the priesthood here. I went, okay. So now in 1978, they can have it. And it took me a while to, to, to come to grips with that. Why they could be unworthy at one point and now they're worthy? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That is interesting, isn't it? So, so I guess that was one of one of my sticking points at one time. But uh, uh, we we determined that we were no longer going. My wife and I were going no longer going to be a part of the of the culture, uh -huh. uh, and so we wrote uh, letters of of uh, resignation, mm -hmm. and it took me a little while before we decided to send them in. Yeah, and when we finally did. Uh, I think I mentioned to you that it took two weeks to get our response back. My wife thinks it was less than a week. Oh, really? They quick, were huh? they were pretty excited about uh, us uh, leaving their midst, I guess. Oh, you really think so? <laughs> Sounds like you were it's very strange. I did want to ask you, maybe backing up just a little bit, your time in Nauvoo, and of course Joseph Smith and the whole thing there with Carthage and all did. Did you, or was there any sense that he was a polygamist to, uh, back there or that he had married other men's there was, wives? There was, oh, none of that, none, none of the polyandry. There, there was um, some whisperings that perhaps Joseph Smith had other wives. Had other wives. We, we heard maybe as many as eight or 11. And, uh, and this is back when you're in. Back when I lived in Nauvoo as a, as a teenager. Your dad ever talk about that? No, or? never. No. No, no, no. And, uh, but that was one thing, and so that was my main sticking point. At, after we determined to uh, withdraw from the culture, uh, 
LDS. Yeah. Is Joseph Smith uh, was an undeniable fraud. And the things he did were not the things he taught. The abomination of being married to multiple women, women who were married, yeah, fourteen-year-old girls. Yeah, I know. That offended me deeply. Yeah. And uh, he'd be in trouble these days, wouldn't he? <laughs> I sure hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Funny. So that that was that was the journey. Uh, uh, after leaving the church, uh, we were not affiliated with any uh, sort of uh, organization. We still believed in God, Jesus, read the scriptures, had prayer. Um, uh, it took me a while to actually get back to where I th thought I believed in anything. Yeah, uh, you said you were kind of agnostic for a while. Well, I was. Well, you know, I think I appreciate your honesty because I think other people um, and so many we visit with have this period of time where they're struggling with, well, what do I believe? What, what does grace mean? What does uh, salvation mean? And who is Jesus really? And what's, what, you know, some of those questions, it sounds like you're dealing or have dealt with some of those. I have, and I'm still questing uh, for... Still learning? <laughs> yeah, still learning. Still yeah. want to learn more. And uh, uh, I, I need more information. Yeah. And... Uh, well, it's only been... A short time that you've been out, really. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I think one thing that I didn't understand as a Mormon was that there is a Christian uh, movement, of course, and but they love people, they love their families, they have great values, and they have a lot to offer, you know. And I didn't appreciate that as a Mormon. I thought we were the only ones that had <clears throat> good values and we were the only ones that raised our kids properly and all that kind of stuff. Have you sensed that there's a difference or oh, yeah. that there's a Christian world out there to I have. for well, support? I remember um, uh, being around, uh, in fact, in Nauvoo, uh, the LDS uh, community was very much a minority. Uh, at, at one time, there was a huge uh, Catholic influence in Nauvoo, uh, yeah. there's, in fact, there's a huge, big Catholic church there. There was a a priory there of the Saint, Bene Saint Benedictine Sisters there. Oh. There was a girls' Catholic school there. in Nauvoo. In Nauvoo, oh. in fact, the, the girls' Catholic school, when it closed down, became for a short period of time BYU Nauvoo. Oh, really? But the students the there were such a bad example to the locals that they closed it down. Oh, did they? <laughs> I'll be darned. So, uh, did you talk to your dad at all about your journey, or is he still? No, he he still thinks I need to come back. It's that and, you need uh, to find your way. Huh? Yes, and he said our uh, our youngest son at home needs to be baptized, and uh, we said we, we'll baptize him someday. Yeah. He said, well, we we want you to be a part of the eternal family still, and. Uh, and I said, I'm still part of your family, Dad. Yeah. Uh, I always will be. Have you ever talked to him about the temple and the masonry and that kind of stuff? Does that, is I that, haven't. He's 97 years old now. Oh, is he? I don't want to oh, okay. do too much to make him feel bad. My mother was... is uh, a, a bit younger than he, and she um, is not as kind as my father. <laughs> no. <laughs> She's taken this hardly hard. Huh? A, a bit, yes, yeah. although she and I are still good friends and yeah. our buddies uh, yeah. father son father southern mother all together but uh, uh, they, they think differently than I do now yeah well I think it's interesting the journey that we make and a few regrets along the way I don't know if you would you have done anything differently that you can with your family or that you've come out and learned new things I may have been more forthright, but uh, really, because, because, but s still, since they are so deeply immersed in that culture, yeah. um, they are reticent to hear anything other than what 
they think in a yeah. very narrow way. Yeah. Well, we, we had just, before we started this, we had just a little brief discussion on grace. We're actually running out of time, but um, did, did you get a, a grasp of the, uh, the works that we did as LDS? Did you sense that we were just trying to do the checkoff list all the time, that you were working your way to heaven? And yeah, that was, that was part of the ticket there, that we had, we had to maintain a vigilance uh, in all of our activities in order to get the highest rung on the ladder. Right. The temple marriage and the tithing and Absolutely. all that stuff to get to the celestial kingdom. Yeah. And, and even though the name of the church is the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, very little of it has to do with Jesus Christ and the sacrifice he really ultimately made for us all. I never appreciated that as a Mormon. I just thought uh, I'm doing it all on my own. You know, it's it's up to me to do it. I never turned my life over to Jesus and grateful for what he did for me. And then after that, you show good works. You know, you show because you love God and sure. love your fellow man. But that's been a big, big eye-opening thing for me. Well, my wife is the impetus in our home yeah. for helping us learn that concept and go back to there. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you sharing your story and I I know it's tough. I, as we've said, you've only been a, just a, a few years doing this new journey and it's, uh, there's a lot to learn, a lot to assimilate and we have to deal with that past that we've had. You had it for how long were you a member? 57 years. 57 years. It's about where I was at. I mean, our, our, our whole life is tied up in that, those concepts and, and all that thinking. And, and then to, to change that and learn the, what I call the bad news and the good news and learn all that bad news stuff. So, well, you've had a rich experience and traveled a lot, it sounds like. I have. Yeah. Well, I wish you were the best in your journey. Greg. Thank you. I, I appreciate it very yeah, much. Yeah, I wish the best for Annette and uh, hope that she keeps going on. She's with a book. Is she going to write another book, do you think? Um, she has two or three in the works right Does now. Does she? The, yes. Okay. Anything last second you'd like to say to family or friends? I, I appreciate you having us on and talk about these ideas and concepts and uh, allowing us to share our thoughts. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files. <laughs>